Hey people, Ed Bud here, shoe enthusiast and non-elite runner. I'm just a person that enjoys running as many of you are. Today I've got something very special for you. You could call it Christmas Day. We have the Nike Air Zoom Alpha Fly Next Percent. <gasps> so people have been drooling over this one since October of last year when Elliot Kipchoge wore a version of this shoe during the INEOS Challenge. It's also the footwear of the US Olympic Trials Marathon winner Galen Rupp. Today I'm going to aim to give you a non-elite runner's review of this shoe. My initial impressions really, I've measured this one up, it weighs in about 255 grams for a UK size 11, that's a US size 12. So that does make it a little bit heavier than the Nike Vaporfly Next Percent. We got one carbon fibre plate, two air zoom pods, which delivers apparently of energy return. I think we'll have to give them the benefit of the doubt on this one. We got some new upper technology here in the Atom Knit. Apparently it's a steamed mesh material. It certainly feels similar to the fly knit that's used on the Vaporfly 4% fly knit. Though it's much, much finer, you can practically see through it. Any light just seems to travel straight through. On touch, it does feel very similar to that fly knit material used on the 4% fly knit, but I think it's a little bit tougher. It's a little bit stronger. It certainly feels more shaped. There's a little bit more rigidity to the upper here and you certainly feel like you're kind of strapped into a rocket once you put it on foot. Not that I've ever been strapped into a rocket or likely will be, but I imagine that's kind of how it feels. Maybe like you're strapped into a very fast sports car. I don't have one of those either. Laces are these strange sort of almost serrated type affairs, unlike anything I've seen before. So let's get out in these, blast off and see what they're made of. guys back for my initial run in the Nike Air Zoom Alpha Fly next percent. So clocked out about seven miles, four of those miles at target threshold kind of half marathon pace for me. Um, I was hoping to get up near about six minutes 50. I think I was a little bit off of that. I think that four mile threshold bit in the middle was around about six minutes 54 seconds per mile. I'll do some conversions up on the screen for those of you who want them in kilometers. So let's get to my initial review on this one. Very, very excited to give you my initial thoughts after my first run. So initially when putting this shoe on, well, that's kind of a bit of a challenge. You'll find that this shoe certainly is more rigid in terms of the upper. It's far more difficult to get on than any of the other kind of Vaporfly shoes that have come before it. You may well have to use the old pull tab here at the back of the shoe to help you kind of get it on, or possibly even the use of a shoe horn. I think that steaming process to the mesh certainly has caused it to be a little bit more kind of, it's got more structure to it, I guess. Certainly feels a little more fitting around the foot, certainly around the sort of lacing area here. One thing I really liked actually when I first put the shoe on, just underneath the tongue, there's this kind of squishy kind of substance. I don't know, it's kind of embedded into the tongue, which I think is to provide your top of your foot with some protection from the laces. That certainly was a bit of an issue for me. I remember with the 4% uh, Flyknit Gakuso edition, I did get a little bit of discomfort there on one stage in a race from the laces over the top of my foot. So certainly takes a lot more effort to get your foot into the opening of the shoe and on. But once it's on, it really does feel like you're locked in. I found it felt really great around the collar here. It does really feel like it's kind of cupping around the back of your heel. A much, much better fit than the 4% Flyknit. There's more rigidity to the heel cup here. The laces are very odd. I don't know if you can see that, but there's almost like a sort of serrated nature. They almost look like something from my wife's sewing box. Oh man, I didn't think I'd be saying that about this shoe when I got it. They kind of lock themselves in the eyelets actually, so as you pull them through, it's almost like they're sort of ratcheting through the eyelets. Certainly does feel though like a more refined fly knit upper on a kind of magnified version of the next percent outsole. I found the upper very, very breathable on foot. I wore my slightly thicker Balega socks today and they were a perfect match. I had a really nice fit. Certainly a nice bit of room in the toe box, 
but really good lockdown feel over the top of the foot. It certainly is beautiful. The insoles, as with the other um, Vaporfly kind of series shoes, are glued in. They're quite thin. I think they're probably exactly the same as the ones that are featured in the 4% Flyknit and also the next percent. They feature like a really faint Just Do It logo with the Nike swoosh. Um, other than that, they're just black. It was nice to lace these up, grab the GoPro and really get out and put these through their paces. There's some great conditions, about 10 degrees centigrade here, almost no wind. I think the upper sizing feels spot on to me really. I've gone true to size with a UK size 11, that's a US size 12. I'd suggest maybe some people might want a more snug fit. They might want to investigate going down half a size, but certainly for me, with a size of like 11 and a quarter foot going up half a size certainly wouldn't work for me i think this is spot on for me in terms of the atom knit upper of the alpha fly and how it handles water and moisture wasn't really able to test it out too much today uh, most of the rain that we had during last night has disappeared and it was very dry conditions no puddle jumping opportunities today but i'll certainly be looking to do that in future runs i've got to say guys i'm not going to baby these i'm not just going to save them for races i'm going to get out and actually really use them as much as I possibly can so I can get my kind of views and opinions out to you guys. You know, I remember loads of shoes I had when I was younger and I just kind of left them in boxes and didn't want to wear them because I didn't want to mess them up. I had a pair of Jordan 5s like that. I'm not going to let that happen again. I'm going to use these up. So I had loads of viewer questions associated with different bits of the shoe. So I grabbed all of these from the community section of the YouTube channel and I'll try and answer as many as I can. So James Otto has asked um, if he feels that you need to size down due to the atom knit. I don't think so, James. I think think that most people will probably be fine going true to size with this one. I think if you did go for a more snug fit, your toes are going to kind of crash into the front of the shoe here. This shoe really does want to get you up onto this section here. This shoe is all about kind of push off. So as you land, you're, you're really going to be pushing off quite considerably up here in the kind of midfoot, forefoot area. So I think going down half a size could be a mistake. The very front of the upper here has got a kind of slightly thicker weave to it and that kind of also appears at the back of the shoe as well the actual side panels here are pretty much see-through it's quite mad really you can see daylight through them hope that answers your question james moving on to the midsole now i know there are masses of viewer questions to answer on this one this midsole is big it's like a large Domino's pizza with another medium-sized Domino's pizza kind of in the middle. I think I might be hungry. I've got to say, though, it doesn't feel squishy or unstable on foot. I would suggest this, in terms of Zoom X, is one of the most stable-feeling shoes I have worn. I've tested out the 4% Flyknit, obviously the Next Percent, the Turbo, both the Pegasus 35 Turbo and the Turbo 2. This one really does feel quite stable. It certainly doesn't feel anywhere near as squishy to me as some of the other shoes in this kind of line. I'd suggest those of you that have tried the 4% Flyknit and found that kind of very unstable, this feels very different on foot. So obviously there's way more foam in the heel area of the shoe, but the thing everyone's talking about are these Air Zoom Pods. They're kind of right under the ball of the foot here, so if you're kind of trying to land on your midfoot, you really just feel this ridiculous level of push actually. I was able to reach that threshold pace without trying all that hard really. Do consider that I've been at work all day and had quite a considerable lunch as well. It's been a tough week. But I still managed to hit those threshold pace miles in the middle of my workout today. They really are crazy responsive, those Air Zoom Pods. Kind of the way that they compress is somewhat hypnotic. You know, when you actually see it in slow motion, they kind of compress. It also kind of looks a little bit like you're under the sea. It's kind of little bits of fabric and stuff that kind of go up like coral. Apparently the thinking behind this was replacing this section of Zoom X, which delivers about 80% of energy back to these, which apparently deliver 90% of energy back. I think we'll just have to believe them on that. They're certainly fun to run in for sure. I had to pull the pace right back on my initial mile. It was supposed to be a warm-up mile, but it just was so exhilarating running in these for the first time. Legs felt really good after the run. Doesn't really feel like I've just run seven miles, actually. It just feels like I've got out of bed. I think over greater distances than I did today that this shoe could really still provide great post-run low levels of fatigue. Tim Gross asked me about that. Uh, he said, do you think that they'll provide a much more limited... Um, kind of post-run fatigue feeling. I certainly do, Tim. I really do think that these shoes will help with that. As the 4% Flyknit and the Next Percent have proved to limit fatigue, 
these will even more. Spaceman Stan has asked about the drop on the shoe. Obviously this is a slightly different drop. I think it's a four millimeter drop here. So it's slowly coming down from, I think it was 10 with the 4% fly knit, eight in the next percent and now four in the Alpha Fly. I think that Nike again are going for a more mass market, broader appeal shoe here with the Alpha Fly. Seems almost like a little bit of middle ground between the 4% and the next percent. Certainly during my warm down sort of mile and a half or something after my four miles at threshold pace, where I started to slow my cadence down a little bit and adopted a slower pace, they certainly felt great. A um, couple of times I just experimented, just seeing how they felt, if I was gonna kind of lead with my heel here a little bit, and they felt really good. I think any runner could perhaps get some benefit from using this shoe. I would suggest though it is somewhat tight around the arch area of the shoe here. If you've had issues with that in the past with this line of shoes, certainly race shoes, then this might not be for you. You can see just how much this cuts in here in the arch. So do be wary of that. If you have a more voluminous foot, I think some people might find their foot kind of coming across over the top of the midsole and that's gonna create some stability problems, certainly. A viewer called New Phone Hoodis asked about um, pronation. Is there quite a bit of stability in the heel area? Well, certainly if I compare this up against the next percent outsole there, a midsole, you can see that the Alpha Fly is actually quite a bit wider in the heel. Things are pretty close though, up in terms of the uh, forefoot area. The width there is pretty similar to the next percent. Eric Sisk asks about the Air Zoom Pods in the front of the shoe, do they feel kind of clunky or weird at all? I've got to be honest, yes, uh, within the first kind of, I don't know, maybe a kilometer, it felt a little odd. I felt a little bit like Sting kind of walking on the moon. But after that, drifted away that feeling and I really did feel kind of like a gliding along really. Certainly at those sort of lower warm up paces and then when I got to threshold pace, it really worked with me. I didn't feel as if I was having to run in any different way than I would normally. Maybe the speed training earlier in the weeks had a bit of an effect or cumulatively the training over time has had an effect but certainly the shoes worked for me. I didn't feel that those pods were odd at all. I kind of forgot they were there after a little while. They certainly promote a kind of midfoot strike and they almost give you a one up each time you kind of really nail it. I think a faster turnover made it feel even better. So running at a higher pace, it just seemed to create more of that feeling and then you just wanted more of it. Certainly Beast is a fan, Eric. I think when you look at this colorway and compare it to Beast's colorway, they're very similar. So I think I'm gonna call this the uh, Beast Percent. Graham Howells asks about durability. Well, here's how the outsole looks after seven miles. A bit of discoloration there to be expected, but certainly none of the tearing here that sometimes people used to see on the 4% Flyknit. And the area up here felt really great. Felt like I had good grip, good traction. Certainly on the sometimes gravelly areas on my trail, it felt really good. No slipping in a slide in. Certainly Graham, I'm gonna really hammer these over the next few weeks and I'll update you as we go, see what the durability of the kind of forefoot, midfoot areas like, where the majority of the rubber is where it wants you to land the shoe. That side, there are some now more quite considerable rubber sections here in the heel area. Ridiculous to leave these lying around. I'm just gonna use them and enjoy them. So I'll take them up to maybe 15, 16 miles on one run and see how they pan out. You know, this is a marathon shoe after all. That side, I mean, you see people wearing next percents on 5Ks, on 10Ks, half marathons, all sorts now. So who's to say what sort of shoe it is? David Cowdery asks if these are gonna supply value for money. Well, it's a big cost, David, gotta be honest. I think at the moment, if you can pick up a pair of the 4% fly nail or the next percent at a reduced price, that's probably gonna provide you with better value for money than this one right now. You know, I know seasoned runners with way more ability than me. I'm just a guy that likes running, uh, who wear very modest ASIC shoes and have some fantastic times. So obviously training and dedication are far better alternatives to improve your times. That's certainly a cheaper upgrade than buying these, but hey, you know, we love new running shoes, don't we? Please keep sending your questions in on these. I'm more than happy to answer them. Please place them in the comments below. And once I get some more runs done in the Alpha Fly next percent, I shall do another video to answer those questions. Interesting, the colorway on this one's classed as Valerian Blue, which I think you've got some blue here in the heel cup, black 
and Lime Blast. Certainly a fan of Lime Blast, it looks great. Certainly traction felt pretty sweet on those corners. There's a couple of quite tight bends actually on the uh, trail that I've ran on these with today and they handled it pretty well. Certainly feels stable and an improvement over the next percent. Quick musical update for you guys. This week I've been listening to this great album from Jeff Goldblum and the Mildred Schnitzer Orchestra. There's some great jazz stuff on here. Lots and lots of guest singers as well that Jeff Goldblum's got along. There's a really nice live feel to the album. It does really feel that like you're kind of there, sat at the table, enjoying a nice beverage, listening to some great tunes. I think he has brought out a second album recently, um, but this one's certainly a real favourite of mine. One I'm probably going to use uh, and listen to on my next long run. So check that one out, the fantastic Jeff Goldblum and the Mildred Schnitzer Orchestra. If you haven't already, please remember to hit the subscribe button and give this video a thumbs up like. Please click the bell down below to get notifications of when new videos are launched and share this video with your running buddies. My name's Ed Bud and I'll be seeing you.